Happy Labor Day weekend, everyone. Happy Sunday fun day. Hope everyone is well and enjoying their time, their day. And just excuse me for a few moments while I take this time to invite people. Because there are a few people that I wish to invite. Especially there was one person in particular who um, made this special request for the day. Because today is going to be a little bit different than my previous gratitude sessions. Um, because previously I talked about my book... Awaken with Gratitude and talked about, you know, different things we should watch out for and how to be grateful, why to be grateful and things of that nature. So now I'm going to switch it up because there was one uh, person in particular that requested a special topic and today's topic is, you know, why do we exist, why are we here, what makes us who we are, you know, it just really is about us and why are we here and what are we doing and um, just really the reasoning for our purpose as a human. So, yay. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle, for tuning in. And I just want to take this time to really, you know, center ourselves before we really get into a place to where we get into this deep discussion of why do we exist? And it's really amazing in how we come into a place of realization of who we are and what we're doing and what our purpose is. Because ultimately, we truly want to figure out who we are, what are we doing here, and what is our primary purpose here on this planet, this home, which we call Earth. Right, exactly. So, how many of you guys watching has always wondered for quite some time, what is my purpose here? Why am I existing? What is the point of this life here on Earth? Right? <laughs> so, if you guys ever wondered that, just type in a simple yes or no. <laughs> and, you know, before I really, really get into why we exist, why do we exist, is... What part of our life, of our energy, of our current vibration do we feel we are in perfect alignment with who we are, what is our existence, our purpose, right here, right now, in this moment? So, with us being in alignment with who we are and what it is that we are doing is unique. Each individual experience is unique. Each person's experience is unique. So, with that in mind, I'm going to... <laughs> I, I may may delve into that, Abdul. So yeah, just, just hold on tight because this is going to be a slow progression of a roller coaster ride. It's going to have your moments where you're up and down and all around, but yes. Um, so, this particular topic, why do we exist? So, I have to go back into some meditations that I've had to where I've actually seen the creation, the incarnation, the inception of spirit, of each individual soul. And this was... Uh, a magnificent a vision that I had to where we had uh, this greatness in which we uh, incept you know, or become in, in this life. And so this vision that I had was each soul being born in this vast network of seeds so just imagine an empty space literally in empty outer space and you see a network much like what you would see a fisherman's net look like 
and each intersection of the lines of the threads that made up the fish of the fisherman's net was a little pod and in that pod contained a seed a seed of a soul that was uh, being nurtured and loved and cared for until the seed chose the timing to be born and in this vast network there was thousands upon thousands upon thousands to millions of, of seeds wanting to be born and in this vision that I saw there were seeds coming out into the space that were ready to be born that were ready to be received into the universe and with the reception of these seeds that are being born you have the intermediary of souls called the midwives and these midwives took these seeds into their care and they loved and nurtured them even more till they decided in which mission or desire or purpose they chose after whether they wanted to choose to live here on earth or whether they wanted to stay in the upper areas of the veil of the universe connected to source or if they wanted to stay or go to some other galaxy and live out their life there but before I go any further that the why do we exist will actually have to do it in two parts uh, <laughs> So once the souls, and I'll get to your question in a moment, Danielle. So the souls that are being cared for and nurtured by the midwives are then taken to, I guess what we will call daycare or to schooling to pretty much learn about who they are and what their purpose is and what it is that they wish to do. Because there's such freedom when you're in this place of just creation. Because that's what it is. It's, it's, the create, it's the birthing center of creation. And when we come into this place, this space of creation, there's so much freedom and so much flexibility in what we want to do. Because we look at the energy, we feel the energy in the choices that we make. And if you guys want to back up a few weeks, you guys can listen to the past few gratitude sessions where I speak about choices and free will. So if for Shell, if you're on here, if you're watching, this is a great follow-up uh, to what I've been speaking about in the past few weeks. So um, before I go move on into um, the next part of the creation, I want to address Danielle's question. So, we choose our purpose before birth. We choose the family we are born into. Correct, um, Danielle. So, if you listen to the previous two gratitude sessions, I do address where we are, where we choose our purpose before we incarnate it into this into this world, and we have a soul agreement, a soul contract with the family and friends we are interacting with on a daily basis, friends, family. They help us, guide us on our path in which we choose to learn, grow, and evolve as a spirit, as a person into the life that we wish to fulfill our purpose. So yes, Danielle, we choose everything, yet there's the free will that we have to uh, express and exert before we really get back. So um, if you go to my website, hillispew.com, and if you go in the Be Inspired section under Inspirational Interviews, you will see the YouTube uh, section uh, where I uploaded all my streams to. So definitely check that out so you can uh, listen to that. and. I think I uploaded the one from last week already too, so that one might be there as well. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, but before I move on, are there any questions about the birthing process and how we choose to come into this world and how we choose to 
create and manifest ourselves. Oh, you're welcome, Danielle. So yeah, are there any other concerns about that? If you guys are just popping in, joining me, uh, the topic of the day is why do we exist? Why are we here? What's our purpose? So, to catch you up, um, just explain the creation process and how we choose to come into this world and how we choose to uh, manifest ourselves through the creation of uh, love and light and being nurtured by the midwives who care for the seedlings, this little ball of energy that comes into existence. And so now we are in this place of uh, learning and growing and there are many schools on the other side in which we take our time to really learn about this seedling, this energy, this bundle of joy which we are on the other side, just pure positive energy, just an abundance of joy, love and happiness and gratitude and appreciation for us coming to experience life in another way. And so now, we're going to fast forward a little bit to where we are these fully grown souls that have yet to incarnate here in life into a universe, onto a planet, to fully evolve and to grow. So, the existence of the soul, of the entity, the symbiotic relationship that we have with the physical human being and our soul, the spirit that is source, that is connected to source, that relationship is one of uh, splendor, one of joy, one of symbiotic because, and the reason why it is symbiotic is because we are first, pure positive energy and two, we are the physical manifestation of the light and the energy that is designed to live here on this uh, planet so without the understanding of how the energy system works here in the physical form, we have to manifest that physicality through the choosing of vessels uh, to give us life here in this physical world. And without the birth of the physical world, we are unable to fully experience and exist here on the physical plane, but yet we can still exist in the reality in which we were originally born into. So, Freddie, so we choose our parents? Exactly. We all come, so just just to clarify things really quickly, because uh, I don't think I posted it yet from last week. So last week I talked about free will, but the week before that I talked about choices. So. Uh, we, before we physically manifest, before we physically incarnate on the planet, <laughs> we tend to, we always have the choice. We meet with the souls who we made a pact with, with an agreement with. And with these souls, they could be our, uh, they are our parents, friends, family members, whomever you are closest to in your life. And they, we manifest through them. We physically choose the souls who we wish to incarnate into and with in this world. So there's no question about that. We always choose who we come into this world to experience with from the other side. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so before we uh, come into this world and actually when we make the physical transition into this world we tend to question and wonder about who we are, what we are doing, and what is our purpose here. And so with us going on this journey of finding self, we tend to lose ourselves in the understanding of the life in which we have chosen and the life in which we have created. But with the choices that we make, each and every single day, we tend to allow ourselves 
the time and the energy to fully understand the manifestations in which we create, which is our experience. And the experiences of each and every single day that we make questions or brings us closer to understanding our purpose of existence. And why do we exist? This is the key. This is the most important thing that I want everyone to hear. And I wish Rochelle was here because she was the one who uh, gave me the idea for this topic. But she can watch it later. So the reason why we exist as humans, as plants, and animals, and any other forms of species you can fathom here on this planet, on this earth, is so that we can experience one another unto self and with the experience of interaction with other species we evolve and grow and develop into newness and develop into a newer understanding and the reason why I specify we experience self unto self is because that we are the spawns or the incarnations and the seedlings and the physical manifestation of source. We are the physical manifestation of God. We are the physical manifestation of what it is that we choose to uh, create. So we are the creators experiencing our own creations. And just to put it in layman's terms for us to all better understand. So as everyone asked and has uh, before, is that do we choose our parents? So yes, we choose our parents. And think of it this way. The parents that we choose to manifest through and from are watching us grow, learn, and evolve. And just like Source Energy, they're watching us do the same thing. So you have two parents come together to create this being, and with their wisdom, their guidance, and knowledge, they help for this being to evolve and to grow and to manifest their life in which they truly desire. And it is, they're watching themselves of this child being brought up into a new energy but yet they still have the choice the freedom to do whatever it is that they want but in their own timing and in their own wisdom and in their own divine order in their own way of thinking so going back to the previous statement to where I said we are here to experience self unto self meaning in how we interact with the plants and how we interact with the animals and how we interact with each other. We are the source interacting with source. So that's the primary reason we exist. And with this existence and the curiosity that is expressed in the understanding of why are we here, what is our purpose, and that purpose is to evolve and grow and to understand self better right <laughs> I know this was, might be a little too deep for some of us and some of us may not take this seriously but this is my truth this is the knowledge in which I feel has been passed on and channeled down into me uh, through meditations and visions that I've actually had so whether this is your truth or someone else's truth, or if you take mine seriously, it doesn't matter to me. Because this is the knowledge and I feel that is needed to be expressed and for us to truly understand. Because as the question was asked last week, and the reason why I'm doing this topic today, is why we're here, why do we exist, and what's the purpose behind it all. So, <laughs> the purpose behind it all is, you know, I used to feel that 
you know, this was all one big gigantic experiment, that this was all one big gigantic game. And if any of you are watching ever felt that, just type in the simple why for yes in for no. But I've always felt that this was like one big gigantic experiment. Say, like, hmm, if I put this and this with that, how would that happen? How would, what would be the effect? Okay, now if I add something else into it, so it's like you're, you're baking a cake. And those of you who bake know that the recipe has to be precise. But how many times have we messed up the recipe before we got it just right? So that's pretty much what it feels like in the beginning when you're muddling around and you're trying to understand, okay, what it is that I'm doing here. We're all muddling around in this big gigantic soup pot, this melting pot, this recipe, in which we are all trying to understand why we exist and our purpose here. And until we all get to a place of where we are remembering who we are and what it is that we're doing, we tend to forget about the recipe and kind of, you know, play our own experiment and, and mix up things ourselves and kind of understand what it is that we are trying to do. And so it's a lot of tweaking going on in this recipe of trying to get it just right. And in this recipe, you have love, you have compassion, you have joy, and on the opposite end you have fear, you have anger, you have guilt, and the opposite, which is the contrast, which is the most important, because now you have a dish that's both sweet and savory and maybe a little bit of sourness, but you have a recipe that works that's to your liking and to your palate. But yet, as you go along, your palate, your taste buds may change, so now you have to tweak the recipe according to your taste buds. And when you tweak this recipe, you keep tweaking and it's like, okay, this recipe is fine the way it is for about five, six, seven years, or even maybe even shorter, depends on how you feel. And now that, you, that you've changed, the recipe has to change. So now we're at a place in time and energy to where the recipe is changing. And now we have to change with it. And all this tweaking that's going on, is some of us like, some of us don't like it. It's, but it's how we tend to evolve our taste and tend to evolve ourselves as an individual. Oh my goodness, and like five people just popped in. Ha. So hello everyone. Thank you guys for joining me today on this uh, very deep and very much needed and requested talk about why do we exist, why are we here, and what is our purpose, which are like the three biggest questions as a human can ever ask. And so just to catch everyone up, I am not talking about anything from my book, <laughs> Awaken with Gratitude, and want to thank those who have made their purchases. Um, but today we are going a little bit deeper into the human evolution and, and how, we are, how we come into existence and why do we really exist. And so just to catch everyone up who's missed any of it. So I described earlier a vision that I had and where the seedlings of energy are born into the universe and nurtured and cared for and loved until they make their choices to experience their life, their physical being and experience themselves with a group or with a family unto themselves. So this is where we're at and uh, so are there any questions so far before I go any deeper than where I am now because I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page and if there are any questions that arise when you are watching this now or later feel free to put it in the comments below and I will definitely answer any and all questions because uh, I know this is like one of those subjects like what is he talking about what is he saying okay I got to think about that one for a minute and it's perfectly fine because this is what I do this is what I appreciate about me is the fact that I'm able to think about and 
these you know in-depth subjects and topics and allow us all to just really think and ponder what it is that we are really really uh, thinking and saying and just take it one step further so now that we all understand where we are on planet earth where we come from source god the universe whatever you wish to call knowing that we are spawns and seeds and at the, in the actual truth that we are God experiencing self unto self and we understand all of that but now we have to come to a place to understanding the contrast in which we experience every day and not only accept it but understand it and know that it is a, necess a necessity because there was a quote that uh, came to mind and it is simple yet beautiful and elegant just the same and so it goes without the darkness the stars can't shine and I can't remember who said it but I remember that seeing that the other day and it just stuck with me and so we have to truly understand and be aware that without the contrast of experience and why we exist and questioning our existence then would we ever really be in a place to accept our existence and who we are as not only a human but as pure positive energy living in a space of humanity and just allowing us to evolve and grow as not just a species but as a, as a soul as energy as light as God itself because as I made the comparison earlier to the recipe you know who's making the recipe who's cooking the pot <laughs> you know are we all in this recipe together are we all in this um, pan of goodies that we are just allowing ourselves to be a part of or are we the ones making it and the answer is well I'll let you decide but for me it's both we are both the ingredients and the chef because without um, either you will have nothing and with us being in a place of truly understanding who we are, where we are, and what we are doing will allow us to create and develop even more. And you guys are so quiet. <laughs> oh my goodness, everyone is so quiet. But that's okay. I mean, I know it's a lot to take in and I do appreciate that in which you guys uh, do and take your time with. And I know everybody's probably out enjoying this hurricane weather out on the East Coast. We're supposed to have rains and winds and all kind of craziness today but uh, yeah so uh, I want to know who who's watching and what your questions are because I'm going to switch gears a little bit and, and take it a little bit lighter so everyone who's watching now and later what are your questions what are your concerns about knowing who you are what your existence is and what your purpose is because I don't do these sessions just for me. I do them for you as well. Because I could have talked about anything else today, but someone requested this topic. So now it's about understanding how do you feel about where you are and what your existence and what your purpose is. So I want to know about you and you and you. So uh, as I wait for a few questions to pop on in, I'm going to do a little bit of promo. Ha! I'm excited. Uh, for those who follow me regularly on Facebook, know that I've been planning uh, my first seminar. And now, my first seminar is going to be October 8th at the Edgar Casey Center here in New York City. And you can find out more information about uh, tickets and times and all that wonderful gratitude goodness on my website which is hillispew.com and for anyone who's watching or not watching 
<laughs> tomorrow is an amazing day. But first, I want to thank those who have purchased that copy of Awaken with Gratitude. Yay! My new book, but tomorrow is going to be a uh, Labor Day sale promotion where it will be free for the Kindle version all day tomorrow. So if you guys don't have your copy now, tomorrow will be a great day to pick up your free Kindle copy of Awaken with Gratitude. So, uh, Michelle, yay, thank you for coming and watching, Michelle. Tell me all about what my purpose is. Tell me all about what my purpose is. Okay, Michelle, you need to, to help me with that one. Do you want me to tell you what your purpose is? Or what I said helped you with finding out what your purpose is? So yeah, help me out a little bit, Michelle. Who else is here? Everyone's so quiet. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's because everyone's out holidaying, which is amazing. I should, well, no, actually I am holidaying at home. Amazing. So, um, if there are no questions or, yes, am I on the right path to my purpose? Well, Michelle, I don't exactly know if you're on the right path to your purpose, but because it's more like an intuition thing it's more about how you feel and you being on the your purpose to your path is you have to it's more about how you feel and you feeling like you're not meaning you probably have to change something in your surroundings to put you on your your life's path because how we feel is always a big indicator of what we should and should not be doing and if it doesn't feel good, then you shouldn't do it. And if it feels good, then you should do it. And that's pretty much all I can leave it at. Because some of us, you know, find joy in some things others don't. And so when we feel that joy in one area of our life and not feel it in another, then that means we have to let go of that one thing we don't feel that joy for. So I hope that clears it up for you and allows you to find what you're more joyful for because that's what that's what our purpose is. That's why we exist. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys would uh, see that I put up a quote the other day saying, uh, our divine purpose is enjoyment. So yes, keep that in mind. Our divine purpose is enjoyment. Oh, Crystal, yay! Nice to see you on here, Crystal. I'm um, struggling to grasp the idea of choosing your own family and parents. Personally, my parents simply were not there for me, and my childhood was horrible. I can't believe I chose that for myself. Ah, uh, okay. So, what I can say to you, Crystal, is that and I say this to everyone because everyone always feels like everyone should have this dream childhood where your point where your parents support you, they're always there for you, they're always caring for you, they're always are there, period. And I can say that with witnessing other like childhoods and you know, not saying that everyone had this dream childhood, some people did, some people didn't. And the fact of the matter is, is that before we incarnate on this planet, and Crystal, you have to stay with me on this. This is going to be a bit of a long one, so you have to stay with me on this one. Um, so when we choose to incarnate here for this particular life experience, we choose the purpose of this life experience in which the rate we desire to accelerate the evolution of the soul of this one entity and sometimes the quickest way for the soul to do that is ex experience the complete contrast of what the soul truly desires and we have to experience the lowest of the lows before we can truly appreciate the highest of the highs. 
And what I mean by that is that there is a process that I had a vision and jumped about. It's what we call it the life selection process where we sit in this purple bubble ball and we are shown sections of each life. We have choice A, B, C, D, or whatever. And we are shown these choices. And for your soul to receive the most benefit, because that's what it comes down to. Each life purpose, we have to choose what the benefit is, what we want to get the most out of that one particular life. So we are shown uh, parts of each life in which we connect to the most, in which we would get the most benefit from that particular life. And so we select that life, it's like, okay, I want B. This is the life that I want. This is the life that's going to give me what I truly desire to experience as a soul here on this planet. This is what I want. No doubt about it. No questions asked. And so, once we make that choice, we tend to uh, recruit the souls who are going to give us that experience. And I know that's hard to swallow, but yes, we recruit the souls that would give us that experience. Whether if it's our parents, our soulmates, our twin flames, whoever this is, to give us the most benefit of that life. And so now, you know, some of us choose to get all of the ugly stuff done, over, finito, with early in life. So when we get reach that certain age, we feel that our life is blossoming and things are taking off and things are happening just the way that we happen to them, that we've asked for it to happen. And so now, you know, when we reflect upon the childhood, so, you know, if I didn't have this experience, then I wouldn't be who I am now. So you have to think of it in those terms, in, in terms of the experiences and the lessons that were received, and you have to find the appreciation for that in which you have received. And when we take time to receive all of the love and all of the joy and all the happiness of who we have chosen to uh, take part in our life experience, then we have to uh, acknowledge that and give thanks for that. And now it's like, okay, you can't be that spiteful child anymore. It's like, I didn't choose you as my parents when in fact you actually did. So we have to take heed in that and understand that. So yes. Yes, <laughs> you're so welcome, Crystal. And my purpose, pray dip. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, my purpose is holistic approach to life. I help me finding my way. Yes, exactly. And I think, you know, when we and you know, I want to say that I really appreciate the kids that are being born in today because they have so much uh, wisdom and so much energy coming into this new age, this new light, that it's not as difficult for them to grasp the lessons that they, uh, that we had to learn, you know, growing up because you know it's so much to you know understand why am I going through this why am I existing what is my purpose what is the meaning of all of this and you know we are set up with so many belief systems that we uh, believe in X Y or Z and say like, okay none of this makes any sense none of this making any sense but yet we still cling to it because it's what we know but the kids that are coming in today, it's like, I don't have to believe that. That doesn't make sense. None of this makes any sense. And so then they create their own rules <laughs> and create something even more magical out of it. So they're, they're not bound by any beliefs, you know, because the parents that they have, you know, parents you know, will be someone like me. It's like, okay, you know, it's like, I, I don't even know what to think of all of this craziness because it doesn't make any sense. And 
it's only there because we've allowed it to be there. It's only there because it was the contrast that we've asked for, for this great remembering, this great awakening that's happening now on the planet. And when we realize that, we can appreciate it even more because it's who we are, it's what we're doing, and it's our true existence, our true purpose and, and evolution. Because that's what it comes down to. It's, it's the evolving of the soul is what our existence is, what our purpose is, is joy, love, happiness, and the great evolution of being one and all that we are and understanding our connection to the animals. It's understanding our connections to the plants. It's understanding the connection to ourselves. And I know this is going to sound weird, but I love it. It's our connection to inanimate objects and a lot of people don't even think about the chairs that we sit on or the streets that we walk on or the cars that we drive everything has energy and everything is energy because at one point or another an inanimate object such as a tree may may sorry <laughs> items such as a wooden chair has uh, was made from a tree or the metal that we you know of the buildings you know were created from the iron of the earth so you have to think about it in those terms that everything that's inanimate has energy too that it has come from the earth and that it you know is the energy in which we have created and manifested and can take the metals and the trees and everything else and bend them into other shapes and designs and don't even really think about it after we have taken the life force out of something that it still doesn't resonate with the energy but in fact it does it it creates a new life a new energy of itself and even still oftentimes oh uh, has everyone has anyone ever sat down in a chair or entered into a room or any place and you felt the energy of that chair and sometimes it may be the energy of the chair sometimes it may be the residual energy from the person who just sat there so we have to think about it in those terms too because that's part of our experience part of our existence part of the evolution is to understand that everything that we create and everything that we are connected to is one that we are one with the universal stream of the universe that you know people say this all the time and it sounds cliche but God is in everything because as I said earlier that we are God we are the creations experiencing self unto self so yes you are so welcome Robin so does anyone have any questions about experiencing self unto self because that's that's pretty much the bottom line of this particular Facebook Live is that we are experiencing self unto self. And sometimes I know it may be difficult to understand because we are in such a place of uh, finite. We are such of a hairline place with understanding everything. We get right to the edge of something that we truly believe in and then it sounds something like <gasps> you know, blasphemous or something that's just off the wall crazy, we tend to run from it. We tend to draw back from it and not embrace it, the truth, as we feel it to be. Not as we see, not as we think, but as we feel it to be. Because that's what it is. The truth is what we feel it to be, what we then add to our physical knowledge because once we feel it then we can know it and once we know it we can really step into it and embrace it and then fully express it as our own because it, it is who we are it is what it is showing itself to be sometimes we overthink it and make it more than what it actually is so yes so are there any questions people because I don't know if I can talk anymore about this particular topic I well I'm sure I can uh, if I just sit in meditation for a little while and just receive more information from source energy because what did I say earlier 
I am Source, I am God, just like you are God and you are God and everyone who's watching is God and people are probably going to say, what is he talking about? Uh, but those of you who are on this path truly understand that the connection that we have to all things is greater than what we think we know. And my favorite lines from uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, The Matrix, is don't think you are, know you are. And when you get into that place of knowing, it's all about how you feel. And when we feel, we know. We're tapped in, we're tuned in, we're connected to all the energy that is. So, before I wrap up, just a few other announcements. I want to thank you guys so much for spending your Saturday afternoon. Oops, Saturday. Ha! Ah, I'm still on yesterday. Your Sunday afternoon with me, part of your Labor Day weekend. I hope you guys are taking some time to really enjoy this amazing weather. Uh, and uh, so just a quick announcement. So you guys, if, thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your energy and all that you do and all that you are. And feel the connection. And know why you are here. Know why you exist. Know your purpose and feel into it. So yeah. Thank you. And for those of you who don't already have the book, Awaken with Gratitude, you guys can get a free Kindle copy tomorrow. Yay! Labor Day say a free copy. And if you guys live in New York City, I am doing a Awaken with Gratitude seminar at the Edgar Casey uh, Center here in Manhattan. You guys can go to my website for more details about that. It is on October 8th, so mark your calendars. But if you guys want to take a special trip, I'll be more than happy to receive you with all the love that I have and for the support in which you guys have given me. So it's October 8th, so you guys can uh, go to uh, my website, hillispew.com, for all the amazing details about the book, about the event, the seminar that I'm having in about a month. And coming soon is the audio version of Awaken with Gratitude. So you guys can read and listen to the book. Yay, I'm so excited about that. So you guys can definitely uh, tune in to all the greatness, to all the gratitude goodness that is coming. And I appreciate you all so much. And if you guys are just tuning in, you guys can watch the replay in a few moments. And if there are any questions uh, while you're watching this, now, later, or whenever, I will answer every single one. You guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much.